Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at the newly released add-on Curve Machine. So this add-on comes from Machine, the same person who creates Machine Tools, which is a fantastic free add-on. There's some links in the description if you want to have a look at some videos covering those, as well as Mesh Machine, which is a fantastic paid-for add-on for dealing with bevels. And in a similar vein, this tool does the same thing for curves, and there's a lot of similarities between the features, which is really nice, and it makes it very usable. So let's start having a look at this and see exactly what it can do. So the first thing is I'm going to go to Edit Preferences, and we're going to have a look at this in the add-on menu. So I'm gonna to go to Curve Machine and you've got some options here that you can change. The only one that's probably really relevant here is to change the default segment count. I've got that as six. I think that's what it starts at. Also note that I've set my HUD scale to two. So it's twice the size that it should be. So if it looks excessively large, that's just because I've set it up that way. So it's easier for people to see it if they're looking on their mobile phones when watching this video, for example. You've also got the key maps over here. And what I really like about this is Curve Machine has set up these key maps so that they're in a way that reflects things that other machine add-ons also use, as well as some of the generic things that Blender uses. We'll cover those as we go through. So there's sort of two, you could argue, three ways of getting into this or starting this off. First one is to press Shift and A, and then you just go to Curve, and then you'll notice that now that it's installed, you've got this single point poly curve, which if you click, it automatically takes you into edit mode. Now this is quite important because if you press G and move it, you're leaving the origin where it was. So just bear that in mind that it automatically takes you into edit mode. And then you can E to extrude. And then for example, I could press Z if you want to lock on an axis or something like that. So I'm just gonna sort of E and E and E that, I don't know, over here. So you can see what that does, and it's quite easy to move things around. So from this point, you just use your standard Blender shortcuts. So for example, G will move it, whereas you can use GG to slide along between those points. I'll show you that in a second. So that's the main way I can see people using this. I will also mention that if you bring in something like a plane, let's uh, move that over there and S to scale that up, and then you go into edge mode. Let's just delete one of those edges, and then we convert this to a curve you can also access it from that converted mesh now to start doing anything you then hit Y and that will bring up the curve machine menu now if you're in object mode that won't happen and if you've got mesh machine then you'll have that mesh machine menu so it uses the same menu option as normal mesh machine as well it just recognizes when you're in edit mode for a curve which is great so then we get onto the main event. And that is if you hit Y and click Blendulate, you start Blendulating, which is basically affecting your curve. And as I said, this HUD is twice the size that it should be. So don't worry, it doesn't look this massive on your screen normally, though if you want it to, obviously you can changing that preference menu. And if you move forward or backwards, Basically, it will either merge everything together, which is really nice. So you can use that if you want to change something that's already got a curve to it. I'll show that in a second. And then move backwards and forwards to make this a larger curve. You can scroll up and down to change the number of segments. And you can also do this really cool thing, which at the moment you'll notice that this is very rounded. That's because auto is on. So it tries to make the best arc that's circular as possible. Whereas if you press and hold T, you then get a tension and you can control that tension. So that's really nice as well. Let's just zoom into that and have a better look at it. Now, while I'm doing that, the other thing you can do with your selected vertex is instead of getting to it through the Y menu, you can just press Control and B, which is the same as beveling normally. And that's really nice and easy to remember. So let's scroll up the number of segments and then I'm gonna hold down T. And importantly, you do have to hold it down to change the tension. You don't just press it once. And what I really like about this is that you can go almost too far like that and you can intentionally create a loop, which is obviously gonna be really nice if you're doing things like cables. Let's just uh, bring that back and notice you can always come back to the point where there's nothing there and that will auto merge everything together so you're not gonna get any issues. Let's start changing that again. And if you want to change the tension, you can do that still. And then if you want it to be automatically round, you can just press A and it will perfectly go back to auto. So loads of options there and once you've clicked and you've done it you've also got your options here to be able to change things if you want to so for example you can change the amount you can turn on the auto tension 
fiddle with the tension or put the auto tension back on so it's perfectly rounded and I really like that we've got that button there. You've also got your segments which you move up and down and you do have this really nice thing that you can have it really high like 16 and you can just press C to turn it into a chamfer which is useful and I'm glad that it's there. Now one limit on this which I do hope they change is that earlier I showed you that there was that amount of default segments. If I just control and B this and then let's scroll up to have something like 16 there and then let's press T to change the tension. If I click that and then come to this one and do the same thing, you'll notice that it keeps the same tension, which is really nice, but annoyingly it always starts on six segments. And to me, I'd quite like it to at least have the option to start on what I used last. So that would be nice. So there we go, there's auto. So let's put that there so it's nice and rounded. And if at any point you want to change these, you can always just come back, control and B, and you go back to being able to edit again. So you can totally take that away or bring it back. So this really feels quite non-destructive in nature and that's really nice. And now that we've done this, you can also do things like, for example, press G twice, so GG, or you can press Y and go to slide and that will allow you to slide a point along. And interestingly, if we then select all of these and control and B, you can also start to affect your shape of your curve that way. Or if you don't like that, you can again, control B, come all the way back to the beginning and then start again. So it's really, really easy to play around with and do things with. So that's great, loving this so far. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that if I say move this to there, and now this angle looks horrible, if I just come here and press control and B, it will start doing everything correctly again. So it will make everything right or we can go all the way back and then do it again. So it's really, as I said, very, very quick to change. Like in this, really simple. So let's start going through these options. In fact, I've just realized how big this is. So I'm going to scale this down a little bit because otherwise it's getting a bit crazy in terms of size. Let's uh, apply the scale and then go into edit mode. Let's A and then Y. And we can see we've got some other options here. I'm going to miss out a couple of these and go straight to the depth which if we start sliding along, will add some depth to our object. So we've now got something like a tube or a pipe or a cable. And now if I go Y, because we've done that, we can change the resolutions. I'm just going to show this in shade flat so you can see what this looks like in a little bit more of an accurate way. And then if I edit mode and then again Y and then resolution, we can up that resolution to make that as smooth as we want. You can also just type in, so for example, I could go to 36. We also finally have the extrude function, which is going to add basically some width to it as well. Now, do be aware that all of these options, if I come down here to our object data properties and then geometry are here. So this isn't reinventing the wheel and they're not claiming to be, but it is quite nice that you can do that to change it just from one quick menu without fiddling around. I do wish that they had a fill caps option. I think it's a little bit of a shame that that isn't there to be perfectly honest because again that would stop me having to do anything in this geometry menu so that'd be quite good and if you've got any sort of overlap here we could again just control and b and you can see we get a really good representation of this and we can sort of move that around so really really easy to use and a very nice way to make some really cool shapes now the other thing that i should probably mention at this point as it seems a good time to do it is if I make another of these curves, let's G that over here and then let's E and E again to something like there. We also have the ability, if we uh, notice we've got two things, and this is quite important, this is just general blender. If I join this curve to this one and control J, it's going to copy all of those properties, uh, but that's got a bit of an issue because we haven't applied the scale to this one. So let's edit mode, select those and then Alt and S and we can scale that down there. And then if we want to, we can connect these together. So for example, I can click there and there, press Alt and one, and it will join those together. Alternatively, you can select both of them Y and then click connect. So that will join those together. So great. And then we can go straight into dealing with all of our different corners here to make that nice and smooth. There we go looking great already. Now with that in mind, we also probably want to be able to connect these up so that they go continually around and you can do that. You just click Y and then click cyclic and it will join everything together and work everything out. So yeah, really, really easy to use. And if you've got several cables or pipes that you want to join together, very easy and functional to use. 
but, and this is something important to know, if I come here and press Control and B, it's gonna say that we can't do this. Now, the reason for that is if I come up here and activate my normals, and I might have to make these a bit bigger so we can see them. Oops, let's uh, do something like that and go into edit mode. So there we go. So we've got these there and we can see our normals, but you'll also see that there isn't really a line that's coming between these two points. And that is because this is denoting where we've got, well, the end of our curve here to the beginning of our curve here. And that's sort of a problem with this, that now that it's working out, this wants to be in a cycle or a continuing loop, but it won't let us change these corners. Well, again, they've thought of that. If I press Y and then go to gap shuffle, it will allow us to shuffle that gap to somewhere else. So now it's gone all the way up there. But you'll notice you can scroll on your mouse wheel up and down and it will just change between each one. So you can set it to whichever one you want. And it's so quick, you can just change it back if ever you need to. So I'm just gonna blendulate that one and then blendulate that one as well. And there we go, sorted. Now the next aspect of this deals with effectively some things that you can do with Blender as standard, but then it allows it to interpret or interpolate this for you. So if I come to this curve and then let's say press Control and T, I can rotate this round. So you can do something like that and twist it. And this obviously only affects this point and looks a little bit ugly on the point around it. And you can see if we have a look at those normals for this normal here, it's now about 90 degrees to the ones around it. So we want to now fix these, and there's several ways of doing this. So the first one is that I can select these, and this is important. Notice I'm not selecting this one, and I won't select that one because I want this to be the transition between the two. I could do this much further, I'll show that in a second. And all you do is you press Y and then interpolate, and it will start to fix that. Let's just uh, shade that flat again. So we've got that working there to sort out that. Or we could just do exactly the same thing and press Control and B, and that will do it for us. So we've got several ways of doing that. But you can do this over quite an extended distance. For example, I could do this all the way here, press Y and then interpolate, and it's gonna make this really sort of nice effect there. You will notice that sometimes this doesn't work out quite perfectly. And there's several reasons for that, mostly because this is some really long single point. So I can come here, right click, subdivide this and add a load of these in, and then just do something like grabbing a load of points and then just Y and interpolate. I'm gonna get a much nicer result. All right, let's smooth that all out for the next bit that we're gonna demonstrate. The other thing that you can do this for in exactly the same way is if I select, I don't know, that point there, if I press Alt and S, we can also affect the scale. So we can scale things up or you could affect several of them. So Alt and S and scale them up. That's just standard Blender. And again, we can use this interpolation to let's say grab those Y and interpolate and it will nicely transition those along. And then we could do the same thing in the other direction. I don't know, somewhere to about there. Let's or maybe even further, let's go somewhere to about here, and then Y and interpolate. And again, we get these really nice smooth transitions from one size to another. So you've got loads of options of controlling these points and these curves and affecting all the points around them. And as always, because this is a curve machine, at any point you could just grab all of them, control and B and start to fiddle around with them or take them down to one and then do it again. So it's just so easy to fiddle. It's just a bit of a dream, to be perfectly honest. I'm really enjoying this. I think it's a lot of fun. Right, let's shade that smooth so it looks a little bit better. And then finally, I'm going to show one final thing that I thought was interesting. So I'm just going to create a cube. Let's G and move that over there. I'm also going to turn those normals off just for now. And if we come to this and we go and select some edges, so let's select there, 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 and there, and I'm gonna press Q for hard ops. So this is a different add-on, one that I use a lot in the channel. You'll notice that if I come down to curve extract and click that and move away, we can create a curve as well. So that's quite a nice way to get a curve started, but it doesn't have perfect even thickness here and I'd like to fiddle around with it. So if I tab into edit mode and select one, we can automatically use our machine curve on this as well. So we can start fiddling around with some 
curve edges which again is great that we can do this I would say it would be really nice to select multiples of these and be able to do them I can understand why it doesn't allow us to do that because it might get confused but it'd be a really good thing to add to this if you could do this for multiple corners at the same time especially at this beginning bit maybe if there was a different shortcut so that'd be really cool as well but I mean machine does a lot of work on their add-ons so I can see things like this being stuff that might come in the future so there we go we can also get into this using hard ops which is really cool that we can do that let's shade that smooth as well so there we have it that is curve machine really fun i mean it's ten dollars at the moment and i think it's worth every penny but that's me i do use curves quite a lot for things like modeling pipes and modeling cables i'm going to play with this some more as i go through different projects and importantly i think it might be worth doing a video having a look at how this interacts with some other add-ons that also use curves so if you're interested in that say so in the comments and if you found the video useful hit that like button and if you're not subscribed to the channel feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that if we do any more on this you get notified and you can see all of the other content that i come up with finally if you'd like to support the channel further there is an affiliate link in the description and that will allow you to purchase this with no extra cost to you but a little bit of money goes towards the channel and finally there is a patreon page where for a few dollars a month you get all this great content a week ahead of time ad free and you get some other perks as well have a great day guys